I'm really having a good time doing these things for me, for you, uh, being obedient to God. It is the thing that I want most in my life since I came to know God. I, I didn't even see that thing out. <laughs> I, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. I, I walk in true gratitude regardless of what's going on in my life had someone say man you got to teach me that here in LA I said come on over I'll show you how to have peace in the midst of whatever the circumstance is because the circumstance the circumstance does not make you who you are unless you allow it to form you the right way And again, I'm taking you on this journey from Genesis to Revelation. Right now, we're journeying with Moses for just a little while longer. Someone who gave up his life, comfortable life, to serve, to do as God had called him to do. We, we have the wrong idea sometimes of what success looks like. Success is not always the mansion with $90 million sitting in your liquid account so you can fly around in your private jet and do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. That comes with its own issues. Success is accomplishing the will of God for your life. You can make, it could be a bad decision to watch the media, the news, the television shows, and listen to all the marketing and it could be a bad idea to listen to someone right around you that has already drawn judgment on you on how they think your success should look like. <laughs> and if you know who you are, it, it becomes, it truly becomes, I know I'm laughing. That's not a defensive laugh. It cracks me up how many people have told me, I remember talking to this guy who I used to call a friend. He is a brother in Christ. We're not friends, but he's a brother in Christ. I saw him at a grocery store some years ago. And I had broken off and tried to do ministry. And also I tried to become a professional poker player, which did not work. <laughs> Lost everything. And uh, he saw me, and I was getting out of my car. I think I had a Toyota Camry, really nice car. I missed that car. It was a nice car. And saw him at the grocery store. He asked me what I was doing, and I told him what I was doing. And he, he talked to me at whatever job I had. I think I went back to the car business because I was broke. <laughs> And he was so proud of me. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of cute that you're proud of me because I went back to the car business. And I immediately started thinking to myself, wait a minute, I've raised kids, I've done this and I've done that, and I've done this or that, and this guy's proud of me for getting a job. A job okay as though my life had ended because I didn't have a job and I was trying to start a ministry and thought I was a professional poker player I could be a professional poker player and let me tell you why I did it one reason I'm I'm learning how to like people my daughter told me to stop saying it a different way I'm learning how to like people people are cruel Human beings are cruel. 
I have made a lot of bad decisions in my life. A lot. And I've hurt people in making my bad decisions. And unlike a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize that when they make bad decisions, they hurt people. We're all attached. I'm not the only one that makes bad decisions, but I own mine. All of them. My decision making wasn't because of anyone else. It was because of my immaturity, my imbalance, my self-destructive behavior, learning how to become a better person. Thank God for growth. Thank God for the time, the grace and the mercy for growth. Humans are not gracious in the midst of, not all humans are, are, actually humans, period, aren't gracious and not merciful when someone else is growing. This is the reason why a lot of people put up walls. Because they don't want to be told by other human beings how lousy of a person they are or ostracized or ignored when they need help the most. I have been all of those when I needed help the most. When I needed friends, they decided to go elsewhere, especially those who called you friend. I used to go to this large uh, uh, ministry in Orange County and uh, the pastors would stand on stage and call people friends. They had no idea that some of us took that as real. Because they weren't friends. Don't call me friend when we're not friends. Friendship comes with expectations. Especially when you're powerful and you have a voice and you speak words like you're my friend over someone who feels like they lack power and they lack voice. We're talking about judgment. We came off of respect of the fathers. I hope you're following me because this is so, so important. From respect to the fathers, we talked about the importance of not living in insecurity and understanding that you are called according to your talent. That was the previous video. This video is, I believe, fairly important, very important, crucially important to your ability to understand that a human being cannot pass judgment on you. It's literally impossible because the next day his mercies are new. He is being God the Father, as we understand God the Father is. But in nature, on Mother Earth, we have the opportunity for growth on a second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day occurrence. We have chances to grow. Life is all about growth. Life is all about metamorphosizing into something better in the spirit. You're learning yourself. You're growing. We're talking about judgment. And, and let me say it like this before I even get into these scriptures, because I want to go into Ezra. I want to go into Matthew. I know, and I don't want to confuse you, confuse you. I know we're in Deuteronomy 4. But sometimes you have to go backwards. Sometimes you have to go forward to understand the context of the material. And by the way, this is for my kids, my grandkids, my brothers and sisters in Kenya, my brothers and sisters in Ghana, my brothers in, in Bangladesh, and whomever else this material helps, God bless you. 
We're on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. I do not know how long it's going to take. But we're going. We're walking it out. Together. We're ushering in the kingdom of heaven by learning how to operate according to the hand of Moses, which in a different language would be called the kingdom of God. Learning his testimonies, your testimonies. You can't have a testimony unless you have time to build one. You can't have a testimony unless you get some things, as you would call, wrong and right. This is where wisdom is developed. And the beauty of knowledge and understanding combine, converge, uh, interact with each other, create synergy so that you can recognize what wisdom, who wisdom is. She's amazing. But wisdom isn't for you. Wisdom is so that you can win those who are lost. In the malaise, the confusion of the world system. Wisdom is the ruler of the kingdom of God. The, the laws of God. She is that which creates that which repeats order so that you can take part in it is learnable. Wisdom wants you to win and those around you. By operating the kingdom of God so that we can all unify under the idea of ushering in the kingdom of heaven. So, I want you to follow me because that's the overall overarching big deal. But, if you don't understand the having respect for the fathers, if you don't understand that you're not, you, you have no need to be insecure, that God has called you, and that no man can judge you because you have the beauty of time to grow. Judgment is not a death sentence. Judgment, let me say it like this. I've already, on the introduction, I've already spent 13 minutes. Let me say it like this. It used to be in my day, as a child in the 80s and 90s, that they would look at a person and say, they have good judgment. They have bad judgment. Which is to say, they make good decisions, they make bad decisions. This is the type of judgment that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the kind of judgment that seals the deal. I'm talking about the judgment that uh, um, the attributes of God. Rectitudes. <laughs> I'm talking about... Um, being fit in your thinking, in your movements, in your in your in your decision making process. I'm not talking about someone else's judgment on you or judgment on me. I'm talking about even if that comes, you still have to be fit in your decision making process. You still have to make the proper moves. Have the proper judgment. There is a group of, there are people who judge you. They don't mean any harm. They're just uneducated. 
our job, the more mature ones, is to work with them and to show them the love of God. So your reaction has to be one that is right and fit and proper. Judgment. The when, 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 I'm, uh, Ezra chapter 7. Ezra is a little known book after the book of Chronicles, after the book of, after the book of Chronicles, first and second Chronicles. I think they call Ezra a minor prophet. Before the book of Esther, did you know there's also a book called Joel? <laughs> oh boy there's a bunch of books in here I hope I, I hope you don't mind me having a little bit of fun as I'm doing this if you do stop it <laughs> oh hi Ezra chapter 7 verse 20 uh Verse 23, whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven. Let me read that one more time. Whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, like love, let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven. Part of the challenge of me trying to teach my Again, this is for my kids, my brothers and sisters in Ghana and Kenya and Bangladesh and whomever else this is going to help. Part of the challenge is the renewed mind. Some things you can't even catch unless your mind has been renewed. The unrenewed mind is selfish. The renewed mind is selfless. So it's important that when you're reading the word of God that you meditate on his word day and night so that you get the, the perspective of the selfless. You're naturally going to be selfish. But we want to get to the point where you can read the word and retain the word. I think re retention will become more natural as well and retain the word from a selfless position, less self. Verse 23, Ezra chapter 7. Whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, like love, I added that, like love, let it diligently be done, let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven, for the house of the God of heaven. Oh, I may have to do another one. It's so rich, it's just hard to get. So can I, let me say it like this. God commanded love. Whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven. Love, it's for you New Testament people. Love is a commandment. Love. So if God commanded love, God of heaven, then let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven. Not done for you, not done for me. Just love for the God of heaven. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? Just love. Why should there be wrath 
against the realm of the king and his sons. Now, I'm just using this as an example. It's a powerful example. <laughs> Also, verse 24, we certify you that touching any of the priests and Levites, singers, porters, Nathaniums, or ministers of this house of God, if you shall not be lawful to impose toil, tribute, or custom upon them, and thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God, that in thine hand set magistrates, judges, which may judge all the people that beyond the river, all such as know the laws of thy God, and teach them, and teach ye them that know not. Verse 26, And whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him, whether unto death, Banishment, confiscation of goods, or to imprisonment. I have to make a, I might have to make a second one, because this is a lot, and I rec I recognize this is a lot. But to me, this is beautiful. It should be beautiful to you as well. This is not centered. The reason why is because it's showing you. It's saying in a different way at a different time the importance of the testimonies the statutes and the judgments that are the kingdom of God I know this is a little ghetto to do it this way sorry I just recognize that and I'm not redoing this video over again <laughs> I just moved the title just so that you're on, you're listening to this and it may sound confusing on the on the video. Anyway, so the, so so my point is that God who is the great judge is not saying to you you're going to hell so to speak. He's saying that your judgment should be based upon right thinking. In other words, you have time to get your actions to line up with the kingdom of God or the hand of Moses. There are judgments. I, I want to show you the New Testament application of this. It's in Matthew chapter 18. Because I want you to understand that this isn't about someone judging you. Immature people will do that. You can't stop them from doing it. They will have titles <laughs> like pastor, teacher, CEO, president, you know. They will, they will do a great job at ostracizing you making you feel less than them because they think they're successful and they feel sorry for you and all this other. Forget all of them. Forget them. And I'm telling you my testimony, my experiences, again, to those who are called for me to teach. Forget them. They think there's nothing wrong with them. They'll pass judgment on you without telling you they're passing judgment on you. And the only way you'll know that they've passed judgment on you is that you'll sow into their lives and they won't sow anything back into yours. Because they just don't think, and this is unfortunate, they just don't think they're obligated to do anything for you. Even though you also are a son or a child of God, all depending on your maturity level. They don't care. They will, they will not feel bad for disregarding you. 
you will help them and they will stop calling you. They will, they will not feel anything about it. You can allow yourself to stop doing things fit and proper. Uh, you can't stop growing. You can't stop learning. You can't stop improving. You can't stop apologizing. You can't stop praying. You can't, you can't, because God has called you to use your talent to be a gift to society. You serve the living God. You may be his toenail, his toe, you may be his leg, you may be his hand, but you are a part of the body of Christ. Matthew 18. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really doing the best I can to make sure that you see the consistency between the Old Testament and the New Testament. In verse 2, 18, Matthew chapter 18, verse 2, And Jesus called a little child, a little child, we have to, anyway, a little child unto him. And set him in the midst of them, these great people, smart ones. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as a little child, ye shall not enter in the, into the kingdom of heaven. Are you smart people? Who's. Whosoever therefore shall him humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. When you get a hold of this understanding, this wisdom, your life will be forever changed. And whosoever, I'm sorry, and whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receives me. When you get a hold of this and recognize that you've been rejecting God's children, your life will be forever changed. Just because I have gray hair doesn't mean I'm not one of his children. Just because I study the word of God doesn't mean I'm not one of his children. I'm going to read that part again because I think it's important. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receives me. How we see each other is huge. And how we operate in judgment. Proper judgment. Let me go over my notes real quick. Privilege, um, fitness. You can't see this from a selfish point of view. You can only see this if you're selfless. You have to have the right spirit when you're reading this, or you won't see it. Verse 6, But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a milestone, mill, I'm sorry, millstone were hung. How could I have my glasses on and not see? Wrong glasses. Where are the other ones? Oh, there they are. I need my glasses to see my glasses. That's much better. It were better for him that a millstone be hung, were hung about his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. It would be better. I think we're going to do a judgment too. I hope you're not lost. I'm not sure if you are. I think you should read, listen to this 
over and over again. I know it's a lot of information, and maybe I have to do more of these because I th I am going to do a judgment too. Um, I don't want you to feel insecure or condemned by any man that doesn't promote you, doesn't do well by you, uh, which you've also done to other people, by the way, because I know I have. <laughs> but uh, uh, but I've apologized. I, I've 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 owned it. I, I I'm embarrassed by my sin. A lot of people just aren't. But I don't feel I want. I don't want you to feel limited by those who are not working towards operating according to the hand of Moses in this case and the kingdom of God in Matthew we're talking about. Because these people do not know what they're not doing. They're uneducated in the wisdom of God. If they're doing it on purpose, then it would be better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and he drowned in the sea so I can't believe that a person is truly not treating you right not treating me right when I'm looking to grow in the kingdom of God and be a part of the kingdom of heaven let me read this last part and then we'll move on. no I'll read it in the next video because we're 31 minutes into it We'll do part two. Cash app, dollar sign, Mr. Paul Dozier. Cash app, dollar sign, Mr. Paul Dozier. Or if you have Zelle, you can Zelle at Paul C. Dozier, Paul C. Dozier at gmail.com, D-O-Z-I-E-R. We're on a journey from Genesis to Revelation. I hope you're taking the journey with us. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take because... I want to make sure that this is not just your ordinary Bible study. This is my personal Bible study. And I want to make sure if you're taking the journey that that you get something out of it. So we're taking our time. And thank you for taking the journey with me. And thank, thank you for taking the journey with us.